All right, so now that we have a feel for getting started with these 6-4 chords and we've looked specifically at the pedal 6-4, let's take it one step further and learn about the next one. Uh, this is going to be called the passing 6-4 chord. And again, it just like the pedal 6-4, it's going to highlight a sort of important... Um, an important motion in music, an important gesture almost, right? We talked about pedaling being sort of this important idea where we can just stay on one chord effectively by moving through a chord that's kind of not it, but also kind of it, a little, little unclear there. The passing 6-4 is going to highlight what we call passing motion in music. And so we're going to look at that. Again, knowing the names of these is really, really critical and it helps us to to sort of have clarity in understanding everything that's going on. So here's the passing 6-4. I promise the third one won't start with a P. It'd be easier if all three of them had different names, but instead it's pedal passing, and then maybe the last one's passive aggressive or something. No, it starts with something other than a P. So when we talk about passing in music or passing motion, we're really looking at something that's moving between two things. And so we can think of passing as a chord that moves in between two things, but also very simply we would think of we would call this passing motion. Play it up here. Where we're basically going from this note up to that note, we're moving a third and we pass through the middle note. Ba -da -da. That's a note that passes between these notes. Da -da -da. And so this chord, the passing 6-4 chord, is going to share that same foundation. It's going to be about passing through these things. Now, when we're just talking about notes, we can sort of just say, yeah, it's a note that fits the space of a third. Boom, done. With the chord here, though, we have to get a little more specific. And so we're going to say that the passing 6-4 is a chord that's in second inversion, of course. It's a 6-4 chord that moves between or passes between two chords that are going to share the same function. Now, we've talked about all these different functions. I'm going to make that even more simple, though. We're going to say that it, generally speaking, is going to pass between two inversions of the same exact chord. So, for instance, a 1 chord and another kind of one chord, like a one six chord, those are definitely chords that share the same function. A five chord and a five six chord, or a four six chord and a four chord, those are chords that share the same function with one another because they're basically the same chord. But it's also going to fulfill that same uh, filling in of a third type of um, construction that I was talking about a minute ago. So there's a couple things going on with the passing six four. Let's look at an example here so that we can see what we're talking about. So if, if we're here in A major, that sounds a whole lot like that. If we look at the bass line on this uh, left example here, we've got A, B, C sharp, and that's that, sorry, motion of a third that I was talking about where we are passing between this A, and this C sharp. And so we've sort of harmonized that with a one chord and a one six chord. Right? You can hear the bass going from A to C sharp, Do, Mi. Right? And so if I was going to do that, I could easily just have the bass line go. Right? And not really need to put a chord with it. The bass line could just pass between A and C sharp. But we want to be able to not only pass between these notes, we want to have a chord that passes between two other chords. And so that's where the passing 6-4 comes in. Because so you, you can see on this middle beat here, we are not just passing between these two chords with a B in the bass. We've got an entirely different harmonic idea in the middle here. And this is going to be a 5 six four chord it's a passing six four chord built on five so if i'm going from one to one six i could effectively do it just with a bass line 
oops, sorry. But it might even sound better to put a whole chord there. You can see I've still got that same bass line. But this time, there's, there's more going with it. But this doesn't sound nearly as strong as any other time that we've gone one, five, one, right? If we listen to this, that's worlds away from that sort of teensy tiny little harmonic progression that we've talked about, which is just sort of basically a one, one, five, one, the root position. One, five, one is really strong, right? This is much different from that. Even one to uh, five, six, for instance. Because it's got the leading tone motion in the bass. The is fairly directional. It's fairly sort of forward moving. Much like, not as strong as the first, or the root position. But still, pretty strong especially when you compare it to the passing 6-4, which I just played. So let's, that's how it's happening. We can see the same thing could happen on the right here, where I've got a 4-6 chord going to a 1-6-4 to a 4-6. And you can see the bass line's the opposite. So it doesn't matter if it's moving upwards or moving downwards. It's about filling in a third with a step, right? and we're harmonizing that bass note. Okay, let's unpack some of the part writing here. So the main element of the part writing for the passing 6-4 is a technique that we call a voice exchange. And this is really cool. So we've spent a lot of time here. We're gonna be looking at the one on the left here, the one, five, six, four, one, six progression. Spend a lot of time drilling this motion into your head, do, re, mi, right? And that really is the foundational sort of um, motion of passing 6-4 progressions. So what a voice exchange is, if we look at the soprano line here, we're going to see that the soprano line, if I play it, should sound kind of familiar. Here's the bass line. Here's the soprano line, right? They're the exact opposite of one another. So the basses are going A, B, C sharp, and the sopranos are going C sharp, B, A. And so what happens is the first note of the bass is the last note of the soprano, and the first note of the soprano is the last note of the bass. And so it's almost as if they've traded notes, and that's where this uh, idea of a voice exchange comes from. They're just trading starting and ending points. And the voice exchange is going to be present in all passing 6-4 models. Because again, like we said with the pedal 6-4, these chords do not really exist on their own. They're part of a progression, right? That's where we're sort of expanding here. And we have a lot of musical ideas that are like that. Even something, I mean, this is sort of based off of the passing 6-4, but we hear a lot of stuff like this. Right, oops. Right, that kind of idea. That's not really multiple different chords, right? I'm just holding an A down to the bass. Those are all just an, sort of a, a building off of an A chord, right? Nothing, re nothing really different there. The same idea is true for this. Even though, yes, we can say that on beat two of this be measure here, the second half note, it's an E chord. We've got E, the root, in the alto voice. We've got G sharp, the third, in the tenor. And then the basses and the sopranos are singing the fifth. 
So yes, it's an E chord, but the 6-4 part of it really, really, really weakens that. And it that chord only exists in this inversion to move between these two other chords. I know that's a strange idea, but that's why the part writing is so incredibly important, because it ties all three of these chords together in a progression, in a unit, in a package deal, right? So the voice exchange is really, really, really important and helps it to feel like a cohesive progression rather than just kind of this one-off chord. So if we look over here at the one where the bass is going F sharp, E, D, we can look to another voice. In this case, it's the alto voice and see instead of F sharp, E, D, we've got D, E, F sharp. So it does not need to always happen in the soprano, but it'll be the bass and somebody. So let's do this one. So the bass is moving, so our bass is moving downwards, and the alto voice is moving. Right? So it doesn't have to be in the Sopranos. It's the basses and somebody else. The basses, let's be honest, basses are just looking for somebody to voice exchange with. We can just come out and say it. Come on. So that's the real, real central idea. And I hope, I hope this sort of makes sense the way that it ties the whole unit together as a cohesive package, as a progression, not just a series of single chords. So the voice exchange takes care of two of the four voices, but now we have to figure out what the other two voices are doing with this really, really lovely uh, sort of part writing starting point. So we know we've got our voice exchange that's covering two of the voices. What are the others doing? Well, anytime something interesting is happening, and we're going to say the voice exchange is pretty interesting, you should expect somebody to be doing a common tone. And in this case, on the left, it's the alto voice staying on a common tone, while on the backwards progression over here for going, moving downwards, it's the tenors who are hanging out. So let's go back to the first one here on A and listen for that alto voice. They're singing E. Because anytime something interesting is happening, we need that glue in there to just hold everything together. Same thing over here. We've got the tenor singing A this whole time. Right? That common tone is really critical. And then the last voice is going to be doing a do ti do kind of motion. So if we look in A over here, we've got the tenor is going do ti do, right? Here it's the sopranos doing a sort of do ti do. Now, we know that this whole thing is in A major, right? So I'm saying this D chord is a four chord, this is a one six four, this is a four. So the syllables wouldn't actually be do ti do for this, but it's do ti do ish, right? It's sort of that stepwise here, 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 ba da da, right? So that's why I put it in parentheses. It's not really always going to be the notes do ti do but it's going to resemble do ti do. Okay, so I know that might be a little funky, but those are the four things that make up each of the, the voices sort of job in the passing 6-4. So two of them are going to be in a voice exchange, which will be the bass and someone else. Then there will be one common tone and one do ti do motion. And that's the part writing for the passing 6-4. So again, the idea here you know, we've got these techniques that, that can produce what we're looking for, but the big sort of conceptual idea is how this chord exists only as part of a progression. It's part of a pattern, and that's because it's a weak harmonic idea that needs the context of these other harmonies to really make any sense because it's kind of dissonant with that fourth, right? It's weak harmonically. It doesn't really have much directionality. It's all there to support the two other chords on the outside, just like the pedal 6-4. So let's take those ideas and see what we get with the third and most complicated of these 
uh, these ideas.